pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And I apologize, I didn't bring our name tag. All right, first we're going to do uh, the public input statement, so if the Vice Chair will please read the rules. Okay, the first public input session is a 15-minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. A second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the Board Chair. The speaker will give his or her name, address, and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents. The board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions cannot be made during public input. For example, matters involving personnel. Is there any public input? No comments for anyone? All right. Okay. In that case, we're gonna move on to item number four the minutes of the December 2nd meeting. Any commentary on that? Why does it say December no. 5th? Is it, it should be it the 5th. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Just as yeah. a note at the bottom, that I think was a reminder who first and seconded a motion. Okay, and it was still stuck on the it bottom? Still there. Okay, All right. please take it off. Okay. Any other comments? Can I get a motion to accept as amended? I'll make that motion. Second. All in favor? I was not here. Okay. So one abstention. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, the student report, Caitlin. All right, so Sam isn't here tonight, but to start, um, right after those snow days we had, we did have the blood drive and that was a huge success. We correct, uh, collected around 28 units, which could potentially save 84 lives. Um, both junior and senior pods for downstairs um, participated in the giving tree. So a few community me members were able to um, get an extra hand with gifts or necessities for the holidays. We wrapped those up and sent them off yesterday or today. Um, as well as community projects in general around the school for National Honor Society. A lot of students are getting into like food drives for home games. You can give a box or a can to get in instead of paying the $2 admission. As well as hat and mitten drives. Those are in Cumberland Farms in North Berwick and different areas around the town. So that's a really cool project as well. And I also just wanted to add, I'm sure you guys know about it, but the Wellness Club here, which meets in um, KT's on Wednesday, where they do work on overall happiness and health. They do guided meditations, guided breathings. They made smoothies last week. So it's really cool. So a lot of things in the short little time, time we've been back from break. But yeah, that's all. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Of course. And I will share that with you. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, financial summary. Okay, so I'm going to just pass out. This is our monthlies for you all as of the end of November. There's um, everything's kind of on track. Nothing too scary, which is nice. Pass that down. Um, again, you know, a lot of things have already been encumbered, so it looks like like 100% of things or 99% of things have been expended it's just because of the financial um any of the the salaries and stuff have been encumbered already for the remainder of the year so it shows there um i don't know if you have any questions about it it's nothing uh the good news is is we're on track <laughs> to spend our funds <laughs> it's a good thing does anyone have any questions are we good okay on to number seven, the building committee update. So, this happened uh, Monday, and I um, was not available to be there. So I'm I'm speaking from my conversation that I had with Denise this afternoon because she was there. Nancy was there too, so she can help fill in whatever blanks I might leave. Um, they met with um, Alan Cunningham, who is the architect from CHA, who's been sort of spearheading the work for us, and just talked about what needs to happen in the next basically two or three months to, to move forward in terms of trying to make some plans about the idea of the three building projects and also the revolving renovation fund that we're we're trying to, to apply to and get some funds for. Um, it 
basically there were like six action items that came out of it. I'm going to see if I can remember them by heart, but I might not. Um, one of which is to get um, in the next, in the first couple of weeks of January, some meetings at each of the buildings so that in Lebanon, North Brook, and Berwick, that we meet with the sort of key people that are looking at the designs for our new buildings. Um, so special ed's part of that, um, food service is part of that, the facilities with, with Kevin will be part of that, some of the key teachers into the buildings, just to, to look at what kind of needs are, are going to be um, addressed and, and to go forward with that. So those will be set up um, within hopefully that first two weeks of January is a plan for that. There's also a process of interviewing the candidates for the smaller projects that have been put together. Um, there are two firms that have applied, one of which is CHA and the other one I cannot remember off the top of my head. So there, those um, interview processes will have to happen again in that first couple of weeks of January to, to make some decisions about who's going to go forward with those smaller projects. Um, okay, Nancy, can you help me out? Let's see. The only thing I remember was um, we were given floor plans of each existing building. Yes. And I don't know if Kevin was going to do this, but somebody was going to do this to go to each building and they want to know exactly what goes on in each room right. of right. each school, right. what it's being used for. and Right, so they're going to be like looking that. at the actual, how are things actually being allocated right now and what's the future look like and how, what, what are our needs based on that. So that was definitely one of those things. The other piece that we talked about is um, the sprinkling of some of the buildings, if additions are made, that uh, that will put us to a capacity where it requires sprinkler systems in the buildings. Um, so those are built in right now into the actual amount of funds that we're going to request, you know, when we go out to, to um, bond at some point. Um, however, if the revolving renovation fund works for us in a positive way, that money can be allocated ahead of time, and so that will come off of the big, the bigger bond bill. So that's a good thing. There was some clarification of that. Um, so there's work going forward. The, the, there's um, people from each of the towns, um, just community members that are working on the program as well. Rick Ingalls. Um, Mr. McIntyre, I'm not remembering his first name off the top of my head. Mike McIntyre, that's it, yep. And um, Deb Randall from North Burke. So they've provided some good input as well from their end of it. Um, so they were gonna meet again on January 22nd and we'll provide more information from that. Okay. All right, the selection process for a new superintendent. Um, the minutes have two things switched. We're going to start with B, pros and cons of working with the Maine School Management Association, um, because that's really the, the first thing that we need to consider. Uh, and Denise is going to. Did you get a chance to make copies? Oh, that, that's I did. Okay. Do you want me to run again? You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to forward the board the email that has the three attached. Okay, I apologize. We had, um, we talked about so it, but didn't get to it. Just moment. Because you're not going to have had time to look at this ahead of time, um, I'm not asking for any decisions tonight, but just want to kind of go over what that option would entail, what that could look like. So what's the difference between what we're doing now and the workshop? The workshop is to develop the characteristics, the, the goals that we're looking for going forward in the candidate. Oh. This is more of a logistical thing yeah. right now. Main School Management offers services for superintendent searches, and they can they range from a full on, full meal deal where you could have them run the whole show, to a la carte pieces where you can say, yeah, we're going to use them for developing the brochure, or they're going to do this uh, piece of it, and it really depends on how we would like to go forward in terms of um, how much input you want from your side of the of the table how much you want from, from myself, actually, as well. And um, whatever is the druthers of the board, really. Is, there's obviously, there's a fees attached to the what MSMA offers. Um, so one of the things that, that you're getting emailed is this a la carte menu, if you will, of the services that they offer. And um, is it working? You, I, I don't know if I'm sending the right thing. Can you, are you, do you have the email that I? I do. Let me find it. You can forward it more efficiently than me. <laughs> but there's basically the, the last. No, I think I was just 
sending oh. the wrong part of the okay. of a I'll send content. it to you in a second. Yes. Okay. But basically when you get it you'll see that the, the of the of the four page thing, the last two pages is a listing of services and costs. Um, and and Denise and I have been talking with Sue and trying to figure out, you know, just how much do we need to spend on they're doing the things, how much can we handle in house? Yeah. So um, the there's the, in the email that Sue it's coming. It's coming. <laughs> um, there are a couple of different documents. One is a brochure. It's their brochure of like sort of you know to us what their services are. So that's kind of a summary. Um, and then there is a general scope of work which um, is going to look like that. Which and then the other one has kind of more of a menu of things. So I think um, the. I guess the important thing that I learned was that it, we we had sort of gone into it thinking that we either had to choose to work with them for the whole thing or not at all. But they really do everything a la carte. So um, sending right now. And then in the general scope of work, it is it's the it's the general scope of their work. But I actually thought it was a really helpful kind of overview of the process because, you know, if for some reason we had them do the whole thing. The, they would this is what they would do which if we do it all in-house that's what we're gonna have to do so it's, it's kind of a good um, high-level checklist um, the in the uh, cost proposal I think um, in you know sort of just initial talking to Sue it seems like in-house we have pretty good systems set up for putting um, you know posting the job uh, you know, be, we don't necessarily need them. We already have a job description. There's some things that, you know, I think we've got a handle on here. Um, but we think that there could possibly be some useful pieces, possibly around advertising. And um, uh, Astrid is going to kind of walk through the timeline in a bit. But towards the end of the timeline, there'll be a larger kind of community forum. and. Um, there may be some assistance that they could provide around that, um, some surveys, that type of thing. So I think that there are pieces that we feel, um, certainly from a cost standpoint, like it doesn't make sense to spend the money, but also that we, you know, have some pretty good systems set up um, and some people that have been through the process before, which is good. Um, so... Basically, what <coughs> excuse me, what I'm what I'm asking for tonight is sort of a board vote on: Are you good with the idea of of picking and choosing from their services? Should we decide that we want, you know, this aspect or that aspect, yeah. without yeah. getting specific? Yeah. Just yeah. just in general, are you like, good with the idea? I think it's a concept that they're asking about. Right. It's like yeah. if if we were, um, w would the board be? okay with us utilizing some services along the way because they have a you know they have that expertise um but not maybe not the whole shebang so if so. we were going to go the whole shebang we would have to be asking for that for board approval of that right yeah, away so right. we're not asking for that but we're also not saying it's a complete you know we don't even know yet what aspects right. but is it okay to consider Contracting no. them for some services. Right. Like, for example, developing a brochure. Do we have funds set aside for this? Well, since they, we didn't know about this, I would say that's a big fat <laughs> no. Yeah, which is part of the reason <laughs> we're trying to do as much as we can in house. The, in looking through these, I mean, I, I feel like if we use some of their services, we could get a decent amount out of it by not spending more than $2,500. So I don't think no. it's a, it's not like a huge expense, something, but um, I can't imagine that we would need to go over that, no. I don't think. Okay. Did, did that, uh, did that come through? Yes. Okay. Great. So you can take a peek at it if you want to. And the page ahead. with the, um, the cost is second the group. second document and it's page three and four. Right now, we're potentially considering uh, survey samples, um, brochure development, potentially development of print ads and online posting, 
And they have um, graphic advertisement development and electronic circulation listed as complementary, but I don't know if that would hold true if we don't buy a whole lot of other Can you services. just give us all the free stuff? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so there might be a, a cost associated with that, which we would find out about first. So we're not talking a great deal here. And like I said, I think most of this is something that we um, would know in-house. And in terms of the brochure development, we would know by um, uh, the next board meeting whether or not we would be asking to for the brochure development. Yeah. yeah. Well, I guess and I, I can help with that too about the I process. It, 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 we don't even have a committee together yet, and you're making these decisions. Well, we have to. We have to start if, the process. We have to start. If, yeah. If we decide to send this process out, right. then it changes the process that we have. So the step one is. Familiarize yourself with this, take a look. I'm just asking for a general, are you good with the idea of even considering an outside for a handful of the objects, not for the, the whole process? Because I just, I just remember when this, when we started this, it mm -hmm. was, somebody said, don't ask me who, I don't remember, that, that we would use them a lot for the beginning of the whole process. That's how it was before, and they've changed what they're doing, or how they're doing it now. It's mm -hmm. a lot more pick and choose than it was when we went through this last time as a district. Why don't we not worry about a vote today? Yeah, that's because fine. you definitely need time to look at this. Yeah. But um, take a yeah. take a look, and then when we meet on the second, we can ask some more targeted questions. We should have by then also have more of an idea of what, Plus, if anything, we'd be asking Ann, for. Joanne has gone through it before. I think right. she needs to see it. She, I mean, because she's gone. yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So let's move on to the next yeah. thing, oh, which Rebecca. is oh, okay. yeah. If, yep. If members of the community want to be on the search committee, how do they how do they go about? We're talking about that next. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good question. Yeah, exactly. So yeah. the, um, the hiring committee, okay. Um, you know what, I'm going to do the timeline next because I think that will answer some questions and then we can circle back to the committee. Right now we are looking to, as soon as possible, place advertisements. Um, get it out there um, right after the holidays, have January and the first few weeks of February for uh, potential candidates to submit their resumes. So the closing date for resumes would be February 15th. During the month of January and the early part of February, um, the hiring committee would be formed and that would mean putting the word out to the community, hi community, um, to if you're interested in, in uh, being a member of the board to, or of the committee rather, to um, contact us and we will be selecting three board members, two to three administrators, two to three teachers, um, two to three community members, um, and hopefully two students <laughs> um, to be on this initial hiring committee. It's not a first come first serve basis thing. It is put your hat in the ring and you know names will be considered to try to have as broad a view of the community, the district as possible. Um, in late February, the initial candidate screening will happen with the three board members who are on the hiring committee with Sue as an advisor. Not vote, but an advisor. The first week of March uh, will be the first round of interviews, which is where the hiring committee comes into play. Uh, the idea would be to have about four to six people interviewed during that week. The second week of March, have our top three candidates make presentations, have tours of the schools, meet and greets with the teachers, administration, and students, and community uh, forum where um, they would each present their case, if you will, um, and then the week of April 6th would be their final interviews with the entire school board. Everybody here gets a vote on the final candidate. Hopefully we'll have three finalists. Uh, and then the um, decision will be made and um, on April 16th the board vote on the winning candidate so that they can then go ahead and give notice to their district if they are currently a superintendent so that they're ready to start July 1st. So I have a question. Um, 
the um, the meeting before the 16th yeah what, what happened at that meeting that's the the final that the week of April 6th so not yeah. just it's, yeah, not, no. it's not at a board but meeting, the so is hiring the committee makes the recommendation, recommendation of the finalists to the right. board right and okay. the board will meet during that week of April 6th hopefully if all our timelines okay. work to make our selection okay. to interview the three finalists and make the selection so the board no will, no no the board will be hearing from all three yes finalists. yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, just have one big word that needs to be factored in here. Mm -hmm. Budget season. Yeah. Well, that's oh, all I know. It's two words. So. Yeah. I know. But <laughs> With there's that's a yeah. lot yeah. of yeah. meetings. It is. But we have Which is I think the point of trying to make like the committees be able to be focused on right. different areas so that it's not everybody I don't know. It, right. It's gonna be a lot. It is. But we have this we need the new person if po at all possible right. to be ready. Choice. Yeah, right. we don't. <laughs> to be ready July first. And so working backwards, that's what yeah. it looks like. Yeah. So yeah, it's going to be uh, a year. Yeah. Busy, busy. Um, where do they advertise for these? You know, where do they put the advertisements? Like so it's, it's <laughs> yeah. Well, so you can do national if you, if you choose today. to. There's um, there's a lot of local in terms of like through School Spring and um, I can't remember the drummer one, but it, it's attached to that as well. I mean, you should also we should look at LinkedIn. We should look at any of the ones that have good professional um, opportunities for folks. Um, the New England um, Secondary School Program will probably do it through that as well, because that'll hit all the New England states. And uh, then you can decide whether or not you want to go something like Ed Week or any of the national magazines. Um, you can talk about that. Um, yeah, so I think we can utilize, Maine School Management does their um, piece of advertising. We can look at what they are doing and if that's does it take care of everything? If it does, great. If it doesn't, then we can look at other options as well. So if we ended up doing a brochure either ourselves mm -hmm. or through these guys, yeah. does the brochure sort of point people back to where that job posting is? Or how yeah. what's the connection yeah, there? Yeah, so it would do all of that. It would do that piece it, of it and okay. where, to, where to send your applications and all that. That's okay, so that. there's sort of the answer to where it's posted, but then there's this possible broader just yeah. advertisement. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a different world than it was just even when we were hiring Steve, you know, the, mm -hmm. where things go. So it's a big, broader world. So. Okay. Any, yep. any further questions on the timeline or what the process is? Because you could go into May if you had to. We but could, you we don't could. want to. Well, right. the, I mean, the issue is about the, there's a 60 day, typically a 60 day um, time frame for somebody to be released from services. Um, so April's really. It's pushing it as as far as it goes. I mean, you know, we can do whatever, but if I don't know that I, it's doable, it's not. It's going to be busy for sure, but I think it's doable. There's we sort of figured that the the time frame of um, when it we're open to getting candidates also provides a good amount of time to kind of get the process together. So those two things will can kind happen at the same time. At the same time. Yeah. Um, yeah, and the, the, you know, if we can get the advertisement out soon, then that allows six weeks of. Because um, you really, because January is not that far away. Right. No, 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 and that's why. That's why yeah. <laughs> I just want to make it through Christmas. Originally, right now, we talked about happen. just having it open in January, and then we're like, that's yeah. not. No, that's not going to be ready longer. in time. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, finally, the hiring committee itself. So again, the hiring committee is responsible for bringing the finalists to the entire board, and logistically. Um, procedurally, it makes sense for the board chair and vice chair to be on that committee. Um, and as it happens, we represent two different towns, so we would like a representative from Lebanon as well. And um, I know she's not here tonight, but Joanne is interested in that. If she would be great. Well, yeah. and I she think she's got the experience. She's done, she's done she this before. Yep. Yeah. She has the longevity on the board yeah. and, and the, the background knowledge. Yep. Um, so I would, if it is okay with you, if someone, we, we can discuss this, um, if you have. If you guys want to take her down? Yeah, I mean, of seriously. Whatever your druthers. <laughs> or if someone would like to make a motion to either vote individually or accept the slate of candidates for the committee, um, I leave that to you. We can vote on them together. Okay. Are you making a motion then? I'll make a motion that we consider Estrada, Denise, and Joanne as the core of the hiring committee. And a second. Uh, all in favor? Can we vote? Do we? I don't know. We can't vote. <laughs> Do we have to vote? Because we need a quorum. 
Are you I think you've got to vote for yourself. Yeah. It's totally okay to vote for yourself. Yeah. Uh, I want it. I want it. <laughs> okay. Let's do it. Okay. So that's good. That that's a nice. That will be my next half year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I have a question. Are you are you done with them? Yeah. Um, you were you were listing off all of those. That was like eighteen people. Do you really want a committee that big? No. No. So <laughs> I think the or the 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 or is yeah, like or. two two yeah. to three, and some of that is making giving us the flexibility to make sure that we have representation from the three towns, but not doesn't have to be three of each of those from right. each town. So maybe it's you know mm -hmm. two administrators, two like just to get to give us the flexibility to make sure that everybody's represented, but it doesn't have to be a one to one representation. And who's going to pick the people on the hiring? I think the th I think the three of us. Yeah, I think because I have yeah. I have a concern about how to say this politically correctly, um, hiring uh, putting people on that committee that all think the same. We're mm -hmm. trying no, to do yeah. that. You need to get people right. not necessarily in the field of education, um, members of the community mm -hmm. um, that maybe don't always agree with yeah us absolutely politically yeah. educationally whatever the word is. Um, I just think you need to have a diverse. Absolutely. So that that's come up, and yeah. um, and I, I think that uh, one of the things that we can do in January in forming the committee is to figure out what is the structure of that and what's what are the role like how does that work? But abs there's no question that having a diverse. Though I think that's the whole point of it is mm -hmm. to have a diverse representation. But I agree that it's diversity of thought and opinion as much as. Geography, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because I mean, like, and, and I didn't know this till later, but um, I thought on the construction committee, you know, there were the, the people from the, um, the parent community yeah. people, you know, were that. Well, one of them is married to a teacher, a teacher in London, so uh, it's really uh, not as diverse as you not thought. in yeah. education. Uh, yeah. No, you know. So I mean, not nothing against him or anything, but I just think we need to be careful mm -hmm. when you choose. Um, so I, I think that people. that's um, you know we're we are we're saying that the the three of us really do get to make those th you know to kind of make sure that the whole of the committee is covers it all versus like okay you're a good candidate and you're a good candidate but we want to make sure that the committee as a whole is okay. is the right makeup. They did have a conversation about asking our student reps to be our student reps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think that's reasonable. You know, they've willing to mm -hmm. willingly giving up your time. <laughs> so, and I think that's um, that's something you guys can talk about. But um, it might. I don't know who would do this. Sue, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I think at this point, it feels like it might be useful to have a, a like consolidated timeline for the next couple of yeah. months with budget season. Like, what are all of our deadlines? Mm -hmm. I can do that. Our or meetings, we, like, yeah, just yeah, to make just sure, we or even that the. One? We uh, got a budget one recently. You did, and I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll consolidate what is that the streeter is sharing. Can you share that um, time with me when you yeah. Oh, can you can you email that? <laughs> I think that was handed out at a yeah. meeting that I missed. I that. Yep. So if we do know people who anyone come to access that is interested in being yes. in the committee, send their names along. Forward it to you guys. And mm -hmm. right. well, we have we not yet discussed what. Website? Yeah, yep, we, we're yeah. going to do that, yeah. but we haven't yet discussed like. What happens after that? But okay. definitely send them along. Yeah. There's no like application form. Yeah. It's just, it's just let us know that you're interested. Yeah. And you tell yeah. us a little bit about yourself so we have a sense. Okay. And maybe ask their availability. Absolutely, because there's going to be a few intense sessions mm -hmm. in there. Yeah. Right. Okay. All right. So um, let's see. All right, on to policy readings. We are going to postpone that because there was no meeting that happened to prepare. Can we just need a motion to table we'll that. that. Please motion. I'll take table. a motion to table the policy discussion. Mm -hmm. Second. Nancy, I don't care thank you. one of the other. <laughs> <laughs> one of you guys. <laughs> Second. Okay. okay, Rebecca. All in favor? Unanimous. Okay. Okay. Employment. Okay, so we have um, a few things that we need to discuss tonight. I'm going to start with the when we had the um, resignation of Laura Lenahan as our system special ed director. Um, 
Susan Macri's been scrambling to try to figure out the remainder of the year replacement and she came up with a pretty solid plan. Um, she has two candidates that are um, actually currently in-house, so that's helpful. Who, sh What she's decided to do, because it will fill the void for the rest of the year, is to take two of her um, IEP coordinators and you know, give them some added responsibilities to, to finish out the year. And mm -hmm. I think that probably makes the most sense because it's pretty fluid and they'll be able to just kind of step into the roles pretty easily. One is Nicole Winship. Nicole is um, currently the IEP coordinator for the elementary, the Berwick elementaries and um, Noble Middle School. And so Nicole would be moving into sort of this like quasi admin role for the remainder of the year um, starting January 2nd if we're approving with that till the end of the year um, and she gets you know it's it's one of those pieces the other person would be Mary Fitzgerald Mary's been at the high school as the IP coordinator for many years and uh, so she runs the the whole system up here in terms of the setting up IEPs and all of those things running all those meetings um, so the goal is that we can that you guys are okay with that for this the remainder of the year and that we will open up those um, that position going forward after the end of the year and uh, have some conversation about does this work is it not working um, there's an overall savings actually to do this because we're not going to fill those IEP coordinator positions we're just going to add a little responsibility on top of what they've been doing um, and see how that works who would be responsible for North Berwick and Lebanon? So that's elementary. currently still, so um, Nicole will start, she'll spread out. Actually, Nicole, I apologize. Nicole does Lebanon and she does Knowlton and she does uh, the middle school. Mary does the high school, so they're going to reconfigure some of this other stuff out and it'll everybody will be covered. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Um, so I don't know what you need for information exactly. Um, there's a Basically, in, uh, about thirty-one thousand dollars of overtime. There's a there's a, a savings, um, mm -hmm. and everybody kind of steps up a little bit. So it it gives them an equal administrative salary, forty-six thousand four one two for the remainder of the year, each of them. Um, and there's a five percent reduction when we hire new administrators. We actually put them at five percent less than the the contracted rate, just because it's brand new and they're they're doing their thing. Um, so I think what I need is your approval. I need a hiring. Yep. Question. Mm -hmm. um, will the pro will that position be put out for hire next year? The position. So yes, that's yes. the plan. Is that we will look at how the year went, what the remainder, and, and d is this a workable situation? If not, then it will go out again as a. I mean, it's she's going to come back to you with a proposal no matter what okay. at the end of the year, based on what's happened. Any further discussion or questions? So I think I'm looking for a motion. a motion on hiring Nicole Winship and Mary Fitzgerald to step into the assistant director shoes. Multiple shoes. I'll make that motion. All right, thank you. And a second? A second. All, right. All in favor? An excellent solution. Yeah, it works. All right, okay. uh, and so then I have two more resignations. I actually have three, but I'm going to start with two more resignations. One is, um, this, these you don't know, need to vote on. Nicole Bryant is a Ned Tech who was working with one of our students who, um, um, she, she focused specifically on brailing for him. Um, she is moving to Guam. Uh. We got with her husband from this is in the service and that's a long commute. so I know that's a long commute otherwise you can't do that so <laughs> Nicole I'm just informing you of this one and Meredith Town is a, an ed tech in the Northbrook schools and she is retiring so I wish her the best but bummer for us do we have somebody else who can do Braille um, we will be teaching somebody else to do Braille <laughs> yeah. it's a good thing we're a school right we have to educate yeah. all the time okay and now I have to read a letter of um, retirement. And uh, so this is from Brenda Gagne. Oh, oh. oh no. I know. And there she is out there. 
So I'm going to read this and hopefully I won't cry. <laughs> But I could ask you to read it, but you'll probably cry too, huh? Okay. Sure. <laughs> yeah. So, dear Superintendent Connolly and the Noble Community, it is with a wave of emotion I compose this letter to you, knowing it marks both endings and beginnings. After being part of the Noble Community for more than 30 years, I have decided to retire as of June 30th, 2020. It has been a pleasure serving the towns of North Berwick, Berwick, and Lebanon as an educator and administrator. While reflecting on my noble journey, I discovered the many leaps of faith those around me have taken. In 1989, Jill Smith and I became the first team to contract share. Although Jill was an experienced educator, I was coming from the oil industry and had only taught geology labs in graduate school. I thank, I thank you for taking the risk. In 1994-95, I proudly became the first female science teacher at Noble Junior High and even more thrilled to see many have followed. In 1999, I became the second adult education director of NACE. Noble Adult and Community Ed, where I have been able to grow professionally and personally. The confidence the community has had in me allowed me to develop an academic and enrichment program that is highly respected across the state of Maine. Staff have often been asked to share best practices at conferences nationally. I am so proud to be part of this team and grateful I have been encouraged to explore areas of growth that would never have been possible. I have been proud to give my best to our district and believe the additional funds brought in through grant writing has made life better for all of us. Moving forward, I look to support adult education throughout the state of Maine where I am able. I'll continue grant writing and being involved in both local and international humanitarian projects that have touched my heart and support local literacy programs. On a more personal note, I look to redefine the image of a French meme, being the grandchildren to all my favorite rock bring in the grandchildren to all my favorite rock mineral collecting locations <laughs> and develop my fabric art and business skills to new levels. And as our brochure cover says, learn, grow, achieve, it's the NACE way. Respectfully yours, Brenda Gagne. Yay. Good job, Sue. I know, it makes me sad. Um, so, I have an emotion. Oh, no. we need an emotion for Brenda. I'm s <sighs> I'll make a motion to accept Brenda's retirement mm -hmm. with regret. <laughs> Thank you. I'll second that. I was going to say, don't second it anybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we tried that with Steve. I know. Tried it. <laughs> all, all in regretful favor. Yeah. <laughs> in favor. Okay. okay. Thank you for thank all you. your service. I want to uh, say thank you for showing up to so many board meetings yeah. and educating us because I think that I know more about your program than many other programs in the district. <laughs> <laughs> and thank you, Patrick, for letting us have her for so long. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Always being told what to do. <laughs> My name is Brenda Gagne. I'm the director for adult education. I guess so as you're talking with the building committees and they requested to uh, look at um, space, um, just make sure that it, it's I always say, Sue's already laughing, no, keep no, adult ed in mind. Um, as we're growing and our needs change too. We're working with a very different population as well as the principals in the buildings. So thank you. Thank you. And I would, I would like to say that, Brenda, it is truly impressive the way you've grown the adult ed program. Yeah. I mean, I was on board when you started and it faced opposition every year at the budget vote and people didn't see the importance. And then it became so that it, everybody was supporting it and it's just it's so huge and so successful. And that's on you. Yeah, totally good on job. you. Good job. Yeah, thank you very much. It's a good legacy. Yes. I choose to fill. Yeah, exactly. But I highly recommend retirement. <laughs> <laughs> Be careful, because there are people who are out to ruin the retirement and put you back to work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, okay. Yes, um, I mean, not for this. I do have something under other business. All right. Let's move on to other. Why don't you? Okay. Do you need a moment um, to? I just need to find my where I put that little letter. Um, I got a phone call this morning from a gentleman named Jason Randazzo, who asked me if he could give us a thousand dollars to put towards the Noble Middle School Music Program. 
And I said, of course you can give us a thousand dollars. So he is, um, he sent a letter in requesting um, permission from the board to be able to donate a thousand dollars towards the music program, specifically to the band program. And um, I said I would absolutely bring it forward to you. And he said, if you, if you say yes, I will drop it off um, on Monday in cash and uh, I would like to do things more going forward so he, he is the beginning of our educational foundation Jason yeah, Randazzo yeah. poor guy wasn't, um, <laughs> wasn't there a particular instrument that didn't make the final budget that was for the middle school band I thought we put it back in I don't think we may have put it back in but I think it was the baritone the baritone sax was one that's other. it we had the band okay. um, why does so his name sound so familiar Jason was a noble grad I yeah. thought so. Yeah. Was he yeah. a musician? Um, I think music was very important to him, yes. Yeah. So we had a nice chat this morning. So, um, yeah, that was a really nice um, Merry Christmas. So, yeah. Um, so I just need a motion to accept $1,000 from Mr. Jason Randazzo. I will excitedly make that <laughs> motion. <laughs> I'll second it. I'm all in favor. Excitedly. <laughs> okay. Thank okay. you. Excellent. Great. That's awesome. Okay. And Rebecca, I think you have? Yeah, I, I have. Um, a member of the community, um, Christine Dudley, who is North, North Berwick's town clerk, but she is a resident of Berwick, um, expressed an interest in becoming the, um, a race liaison for the administration. And I had to Google it and look up what that was because I didn't really. <laughs> <laughs> um, I know she has. Um, her family is a mixed race family, so um, that's probably why she has the interest in it. But um, I think it's a good idea. I don't know how exactly that would work. With um, I mean, larger districts have you know a full time person, not like they have like an equality um, officer or um, some of some districts like out in California because they have so many. Um, different races of kids and, and immigrants. Um, they have what are called parent liaisons, but, but, but they have like uh, education degrees and social work degrees, and that they work with the parents to try to make sure they have all their, you know, that they know what is available to them in applying for programs and getting all the support they need and stuff. Um, but I, I couldn't really find anything. About like a uh, uh, sort of a volunteer or part-time person to do that, and I'm sure there are regulations that you have to comply with and everything. So, um, but you know, I just wanted to. I told her I would bring it up. She didn't know how you would even go about um, trying to apply for something like that, um, and she also knows. Um, I think her son's going to UNH now, and she um, knows one of the professors at UNH who she thinks would also be a good uh, person to just have some input in, you know, he's good at, like, motivating and giving, uh, talking to young young people and giving them um, ideas for starting businesses and that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I definitely think there's, there are issues with um, minority people, <coughs> persons of color in our society, and I, I know it's a very white state and we have, um, like, I think the most significant minority we have is Native American, but, um, you know, I just, I, the <coughs> things you see in the, here in the news, and I know there have been issues with, in like, MSAD 60 a couple of years ago, somebody said the N, called some the N-word on the bus, and, you know, stuff like that does ha happen, so, um, I don't know, it's tough for kids that are in that position and we think we should try to give them as much support as we can. Mm -hmm. So um, I said I would bring it up and discuss it with the board. I if know. the board's interested, I'm happy to reach out to Christine and talk to her about what her thought process is on it and, and what, I mean, part of my multiple hats is dealing with um, all things related to discrimination and things like that and I'd be interested right. to see what she has for ideas and thoughts on it. I think it would be interesting to mm -hmm. at least begin the conversation and see if there's something more that... Is she volunteering for services? 
Because I'm not seeing a lot of money. No, I know. And I think that's the reach out is like, what are we looking at? What are we asking for? What is the ask here? She does have a full time job now. So, yeah, it was just like just a little bit of you know messaging back and forth and I said I would check on it I didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to speak for the board but um, you know she's a very level-headed person and I would I definitely think it would be um, I mean I think it's important but I also think it would be very beneficial to just kind of have a lay of the land and mm -hmm. you know like some of the discussions mm -hmm. we we're having about you know what is a what does a trauma informed school look mm -hmm. like? What is a equality? I don't even know what you call. It, but like what's you know mm -hmm. I, I think that what is yeah a diversity awareness and and um, so I, I would be interested in hearing I guess what she had in mind, but also I would be interested in becoming educated by somebody. Mm -hmm. Let's have yeah, policies that cover. Sure. I, I mean, I think right. this is beyond. An, this yes. Is, yeah. Right. yeah. I think this is more of a. Um, and I'm not speaking for Christine. My guess is that there's some level of personal observations that she would like to be able to talk about and see if there's ways to address things in a different manner. That's all. But I think mm -hmm. that um, nobody ever does it quite right all the time. So I think there might be some things that we, we could do a, differently. like an issue. She doesn't have like a major, major issue going on. I don't on. think so because, well, her son's not even in school. Right. Her he son's went not through school. Noble, but he's yeah. in college now. So um, I think it's just more about wanting to have input. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I mean, the thing to me is like, I, I, well, don't, I like to think that I'm not a racist person, but it's hard for you to, even if you try to be, you know, have empathy and, and treat everyone equally. It's like, I'm in a club, you know, a person who's not, who's not in the club is going to see things differently than mm -hmm. a person Perspective whether is everything. you want to be in that club or not, you know, so, um, that's, I can just do a little research if you want and just talk with her and find out what I she's thinking about and idea. say, keep it off of the, uh, out of this conversation and we can have yeah. her. If we feel like it's important, I'll put it out to you guys and we can talk about having her come in and chatting with us in general. I've read mm -hmm. several heartbreaking accounts on the parents of site and I know, you know, sometimes that's people with an axe to grind, but mm -hmm. the stories are heartbreaking of children who've been the treated no, the noble bullied, case. the noble parents site. I mean, you're right, um, it's everywhere. Yeah, and it doesn't. It, it happens on another level than our policies or an incident being reported to administration. Like this is, but it's just a whole other we level. We that need never a safe way for mm -hmm. children to address the bullying when it happens, which they're supposed to anyway. But I mean, to be honest, our society is changing so much that the labels just don't apply to very many people anymore. You know? Yeah. Everybody's mixed something. It's true. You can need a motion if you I don't think so. As long as you're okay with it, I'll reach out to Christine and, and, and uh, have a conversation. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Sounds good yeah. and right in your purview, too. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, many things. Yeah. Sure. Mm -hmm. I appreciate it when yeah. people speak up. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah. Especially since she doesn't have children in the school anymore, yeah. but she yeah. still cares about, you know, the existing. Population here. Yeah. Okay. Right. I think we have gotten to number thirteen. Oh no! Wait. We have public input. Any other? Any other desire other? for others or public input? Mm -hmm. no. Are you guys here because of that class? Are you here? For, okay. <laughs> we'll sign for you. Later. <laughs> okay. Uh, in that case, um, can I have a motion to adjourn? So that we can then go. <laughs> Ms. Newberg, she's right up with it. Yeah. <laughs> and a second? I'll second. Um, I'm on fire favor. tonight. <laughs> Eight o'clock, guys, not bad. 15 minutes early. All right. We're going into executive session. When you come back out, there's no further business. There's no further business. We're doing a workshop. So it's actually not executive session, it's a workshop. Okay. But, so, yeah. but yes, but no further business.